So in this video cast, we're going to talk about forces. What are they? Um, what kind of forces are we going to see in freshman physics? And how to draw force diagrams. So we start with the definition. What is a force? Uh, sometimes people say a force is something that makes an object move. And in some cases that's true, but not always. You can apply a force to things and have them not move. So think about leaning on a desk or something like that, leaning on somebody's car. You're applying a force to that car, but the car isn't moving. Uh, so really we can be pretty simple about it. We can define a force as a push or a pull. So in this case, this guy is pushing on this cart, and over here, this guy is pulling on the box. So pretty simply, a force is just a push or a pull. We're going to add actually one thing to that definition in freshman physics. We're going to say that a force is an interaction that results in a push or a pull. And the reason we're going to say interaction is because if you look at it, in order to push this cart, this guy right here has to push on the cart. Uh, he has to actually interact with, he has to actually come into contact with that cart. Um, so while he's pushing on the cart, the cart's pushing back on him. Over here to pull on this rope, this guy has to interact with, he has to actually touch it. He pulls one way on the rope and the rope is pulling the other way on him. So a force always involves an interaction. In fact, when we get to things that are more complicated and you're trying to figure out what forces are acting on an object, if you can figure out that interaction, if you can say here's the thing that causes that force, then you really can understand what force should be there. If you can't figure out what's causing the force, it's a possibility that maybe that force isn't actually there. There's some other explanation for what's happening. So now that we've got a definition for force, let's talk about a few types of forces. So there's really only four forces we're going to deal with this year. And um, I've got some pictures of, of, of a skydiver that we can use to illustrate these four forces. So in the first one, the skydiver is falling. And the reason he's falling is because there's a force pulling him down. And that force is the force of gravity. So our first force is a gravitational force right there. Okay. In the second one, gravity is still pulling him down, but now there's some forces going up. There's all these ropes that are attached to the, the parachute rig and the canopy, and any force that comes from a rope or a chain or a string or anything like that, we call those forces tension forces. So there's forces of tension going back up there in the opposite direction of gravity. Uh, there's something else going on here because he's not falling as fast here as he was over here. And the reason for that is because there's frictional forces slowing him down. So the third kind of force we'll talk about is the force of friction. And friction is anytime you have two surfaces moving against each other, friction is the force that resists that motion, that slows them down. So friction always acts in the opposite direction of motion. The opposite direction of motion. Okay, so gravity, tension, friction, and then finally, over here, they're on the ground, gravity is still pulling down, but they're not falling. There's some force going back up. In this case, the ground is pushing back up on him. And the name that we call that force, it's kind of a different name for force, but it's called a normal force. And normal is kind of an old word for perpendicular. So the normal force is anytime you have two surfaces in contact with it, with each other, uh, the force from one of those surfaces on the other is called a normal force. And a normal force is always perpendicular to the surfaces in contact. So not always straight up. It happens to be straight up because these guys are on flat ground, but if that was tilted, it would be 90 degrees to that surface.
Okay, so those are the four forces we will deal with, and pretty much, unless I say otherwise, every force we encounter will be one of these four forces. So once we have an idea for these forces, what can we do with them? Well, we can start to look at some situations and draw what are called force diagrams, or free body diagrams, sometimes they're called. So I've got these three situations, and we're going to draw some force diagrams for these situations. And the way we draw a force diagram is, first we talk about what object are we going to draw the diagram for. So in this case, I'm going to draw a force diagram for this bird right here. So to simplify things, we just represent that bird with a dot. And we say, okay, what forces are acting on that bird? The first force, and you can almost always count on this one being part of your force diagrams, is the force of gravity going straight down. So I put a capital F, and then I write a little gravity there next to that, because the force of gravity is acting down. Uh, that's not it, because the bird is not falling, so there's actually an upward force from this log that he's sitting on, and that's called the normal force. Remember, that's that perpendicular force right back up there. Okay, those two forces are equal. The bird's not moving, so we put a little hash mark on each one to show that those two are equal. All right, next up, we've got this uh, chandelier hanging there. So let's draw a force diagram for the chandelier. Okay, so we represent that with a dot. And we know there's the force of gravity going down. All right. And then it's not falling, so there's a force back up. And in this case, there's a chain holding it, so that's a force of tension going back up. And again, forces are balanced, so those two forces are equal to each other. And our last picture, we have this car that's parked on a, on a hill. So to draw a force diagram for this, still have gravity, straight down, force of gravity. Um, now there's a normal force, but remember we said normal forces aren't always straight up, they're perpendicular to the surface. So that normal force actually goes off in this direction because it's perpendicular to that hill. So our normal force is over, kind of going off this way. So there's our force normal right there and then the car wants to slide down the hill but it's not so if something wants to move and it's not moving there must be a friction force keeping it from moving and friction goes in the opposite direction of the way something wants to move so we've got a friction force there we go force of friction going back up the ramp okay so that's how we draw force diagrams. You take whatever the object is. Uh, I forgot, I should circle this the car is what our object was right there. But whatever the object is, uh, represent it with a dot, and then just draw arrows to show the forces acting on that object. I should say the forces on this car are balanced, but these three forces do not have to be equal to each other. Uh, the two upward forces balance the downward force, but they're not necessarily the exact same number. So... Let's look at one more example. Let's clear that. And here, so let's see we have this person pulling uh, a sled full of presents. Uh, so if we want to draw a force diagram for the sled, we would draw a dot right there. And so we've got a force of gravity going almost straight down. That should be straight down. Force of gravity. Going back up, we have a normal force, and then at an angle following the string. Tension forces are always in the same direction as the string, so up at that angle we have a force of tension. And anytime we have two surfaces moving together, we've got friction, so friction is acting this way in the opposite direction that that object wants to go. So there's friction right there. Okay, so hopefully that gets you in a good start in drawing force diagrams. There's plenty of practice on the website, so visit there and check those out, but let me know if you have any questions.